orchestrated, scripted piece where I try to convince them that I'm being in the moment. <laughs> it's at the very beginning. It's where I say, uh, I aspire to be a satirist, uh, but you say that people think you have goat legs. <laughs> and then I drop my head and I go, okay, that was a test joke. So that they can hear right. the different, you know, that I'm addressing them and I'm trying to, you know, so they get the difference and yet the similarity, because I'm real verbose on stage and authorly and writerly. And, and so I try to, if I can do that, in my soliloquies, my sides to the audience, then they're comfortable with the fact that that's part of the script. They get used to the language and they buy into my my little scam. So that's that's what I try to do. I knew Will before he he dropped the E of Durst. Like he actually had D U R S T originally out of Milwaukee. Uh, great Giants fan. A really terrific guy, actually. Uh, uh, Probably the, probably the top three guys I've met in this business in terms of just being uh, a genuine guy. Yeah. He and his wife are lovely people. And uh, it's probably why me and my buddy Ken are here uh, on the last night of the show. Because I love the way he works. It, it almost doesn't come down to material for me. It's, it's the technique I like. I, I like the way he works the room. He works it like an actor. Which, is, which makes this a perfect venue for him. for Madison and yourselves for finding parking here in the mission thank you so much for coming uh, let me explain what's going on my name is Will Durst and I am a political comic I aspire to be a satirist but you say that and people think you have goat legs or something <laughs> Okay, people, that, uh, that was a test joke. <laughs> and seriously, we're both going to have to step up our games at this point. As you might well imagine being a political comic, uh, ephemeral, mercurial, quixotic sort of a deal. It's up and down and left and right and in and out and hot and cold and north and south, the whole Katy Perry song. <laughs> Sometimes there's nothing going on and I'm screwed. But not now. <laughs> so not now. <laughs> the most not now in the history of not nows. We are talking DEFCON 4. Not now. Not now to the power of damn. And I know, I know this guy sucks for the country and the, and the hemisphere and the planet and the solar system and the universe. But for me. <laughs> He's pure gold. <laughs> Fool's gold, perhaps, but gold nonetheless. He has done for political comedy what legalized marijuana did for Cheetos. <laughs> what quarter sticks of dynamite do to night fishing. <laughs> and I got a bit being a bit conflicted. Uh, uh, doing this in the time of Trump is indeed thrilling. But it's also a bit unseemly. You know, I feel like a jackal feeding on the carcass of democracy sometimes. <laughs> this must be what it's like to be a corporate lawyer. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wrong crowd, apparently. And the Catholic part of me, uh, it feels very guilty for this embarrassment of riches. Uh, the Jewish part of me, uh, eh? <laughs> The way of the Buddha teaches us to go with the flow. Scientology training will tell you that there might be some money in this. And all my Mormon friends say this might be a great way to meet fertile women. I'm just an ecumenical pilgrim searching for loopholes. You all know what a worst case scenario is. That's a contingency plan in the event of a disaster. Well, <laughs> Thirst case scenario is the same thing, only with jokes. <laughs> the problem with telling jokes about Trump, though, is uh, Republicans don't think they're funny. And Democrats don't think they're jokes. <laughs> That's not funny, Ken.
because it's true. <laughs> now, before we get started, I have a favor to ask. I'm going to need your assistance here. Uh, before I put the show together, against my better judgment, I talked to uh, a, a consultant, and uh, his advice was uh, the show needs to be interactive. Apparently, that's, that's a big thing these days, interactivity and engagement. And technology more modern than an overhead projector, but <laughs> my theory is baby steps. And I love these things. I do. They're warm. They're illuminating. The soft, reassuring hum of the fan. <laughs> and in the event of a complete breakdown in the electrical grid, you could use this. You'd need a shitload of candles, but still. <laughs> so, and the interactivity part, I totally understand. Uh, the interactivity, it's not enough for people to see a show anymore. They have to be the show. <laughs> the engagement part, I'm not sure what that is. I think it means if a joke doesn't work, I'm supposed to explain it. <laughs> I'm totally fine with that. I wish HBO had done that with Westworld because I had no idea <laughs> what was going on. So, um, I am going to ask you a couple of questions, and your answers will allow me to customize your comedy experience. <laughs> yes, to augment the amusement, <laughs> to heighten the hilarity, to magnify the merriment, to fan the flames of fun, and yeah, there'll, there'll be a lot of that. <laughs> and also, at the end of the show, we're going to rate each other on our shared experience. So just think of this as an 85-minute Uber ride with a happy ending. <laughs> and Uber is like a taxi <laughs> without insurance or background checks. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 I'm not supposed to tell you this, but audiences that top out at five stars are eligible for an extra added special gift. Ooh. No, not a car. Uh, today is... December 19th, 2017, 121917, we're at the Marsh. Uh, how many of you uh, came here on public transportation? Yeah. Excellent. I, 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 I sell some of this information to Muni. Um, how many of you were afraid this sort of shit was going to happen? <laughs> Definitely a couple, all right. How many like magic? Anybody? Okay. Uh, who here prefers cats over dogs? How about dogs over cats? They're always more aggressive, aren't they? Uh, uh, who prefers pets over people? Yeah, we're an emerging majority. Uh, how many people like nudity? Not, not the cast. No, no. Representational nudity. Uh, who voted last November 8th? Okay. And uh, who did you vote for? How many people voted for Green Party candidate Gary Johnson? I'm not sure that's necessary. Uh, better? Worse. Better? Worse. <laughs> Okay, how many people voted for Green Party candidate, Dr. Jill Stein? One, two, three. We're in California, it didn't really matter. Okay, 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 enough with the hissing. Because there's a point later on, not far away, where the hisses are, are apropos. How many voted for Hillary Diane Rodham Clinton? <laughs> Are you sure this is San Francisco? It sounds like Berkeley to me. And who voted for this guy? Wow. Well, well, don't sit back. Tell me how you feel. Yeah, that was. Uh, I don't. I don't get a lot of Trump supporters in my show. <laughs> 
And I tell them up front that uh, if you think that the current occupant of the Oval Office is a breath of fresh air, this show is not for you. If big words confuse you, stay home. Okay. Uh, on a one to ten scale, how much do you like audience participation? Please applaud. That's a six. That's very good. That's yeah. Who here has ever given a performer a standing ovation? Bear that in mind. <clears throat> how many people like show tunes? Okay. Movie references. Movie references. Yes, oldies. Shakespeare. Impressions. Dead languages. Two people, English teachers both. And who likes jokes? Just the classic joke. Okay. How dirty of a joke? On a one to ten scale. You know, you say that. And then I do the ten, and for the rest of the show, everybody is. So how about a, how about a four to six? Because that adds up to ten. Okay? So here are the jokes for today. Number four. A chicken and an egg are having sex. Finally, they finish. The egg rolls over, lights up a cigarette, turns to the chicken, and says, Well, that answers that. <laughs> it's a rhetorical joke. And you're right. No, it doesn't answer that. That's why. Okay. Okay, let's try the six. <clears throat> I like this one. Yeah, good choice. Lady puts an ad in the paper. The ad reads, I need a man will not run around, will not beat me, but is good in bed. Next morning she answers the doorbell. There on the mat is a guy with no arms and no legs. She says, the hell are you doing here? He said, well, I came to answer the ad. She said, well, you don't fit the qualifications. She said, sure, do we got no arms, won't be jab, got no legs, can't run around. She says, well, you gotta be good in bed. He said, well, I rang the doorbell, didn't I? <laughs> Okay, th this is important for me to figure out where you're coming from. <laughs> These are all test jokes. Well, that, that, uh, that concludes our, our little test. Thank you so much for all your help. Uh, your, your information will allow me to ratchet up the comedy entertainment for tonight. And there'll be a lot of ratchet in this show. Uh, <laughs> let me explain the career of a political comic. This is the normal career arc. The normal career arc for a political comic is, <clears throat> and for you kids, this is the interactive portion of the show. <laughs> Normally, it peaks at the quadrennial, the presidential election. Everybody wants to hear the political jokes. The next year, the year after, nobody wants to hear the political jokes. Too many of them got elected. <laughs> <laughs> Will Rogers, 1933 people, respect your elders, of which now I am one. Okay. Then, in the next year, the midterms, uh, interest starts rising, and then they're already running for the, the big one, uh, the, the next, and then, and then it starts all over. It's like a heartbeat. It repeats. It's like this. And, and I swear to God, last year, everybody had a show. So you would, you would expect that, that it would go. But no, 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 no. People, people need to hear the humor. Yeah, they're seeking community. It's almost cathartic. It's, it's like I'm half comic, half therapist. <laughs> I'm Dr. Durst. I'm shepherding people through their bad case of PTSD, their <laughs> President Trump stress disorder. <laughs> Seriously, I get people coming up after the show saying, thank you. I never thought I'd laugh again. Thank you. I've never, got, I've never gotten thank you. I've gotten nice set, funny shit, but never thank you. It's, have you ever thought that this, this, this might be a plot by the pharmaceuticals to sell more Xanax? <laughs> Drugs are flying off the shelves, man. And 
in order to determine whether or not you are susceptible to the harrowing effects of this debilitating disease. I have a list, I have a list of symptoms here, so let me know if you recognize any of these symptoms. These are the top symptoms of PTSD. Can everybody see that? Number one, an inability to sleep and recurring nightmares most involve a second Donald Trump term or a third and fourth with Ivanka. <laughs> The phrase wake and bake has re-entered your vocabulary. I did this at Bolinas and they were confused by the word re-entered. <laughs> Using words that rhyme with frump make it queasy. So humping to dump Trump's rump in a sump pump. Yeah, nobody knows what a sump pump is in San Francisco. Thank you. <laughs> you find yourself asking the dog, imagine if Hillary said that. <laughs> Physically cringe whenever you turn on the news. <laughs> you laugh hysterically at Garfield comics. <laughs> because it's not funny. Okay. <laughs> For no apparent reason, you start screaming at Alex Trebek. Just me, huh? You find yourself asking the dog, imagine if, imagine if Obama did that. Emotionally numb to not caring whether the Niners win or lose. Searching for a holistic survivalist training course. And finally, uh, still feeling intense guilt for just not liking Hillary enough. Not finally, this is finally. Have Canadian immigration website bookmarked on your computer. Oh, lately the term moderation means only two tequila shooters before noon. That only works in my heart. Okay, let's go to the lightning round. See how we got here. It all started February of 2016. On February 1st was the Iowa caucuses, ladies and gentlemen, and nobody knows what happens at the Iowa caucuses. Uh, this is Iowa, this is their taste treat, that is the pork tenderloin sandwich, that is also how they wear their pants, and <clears throat> the winner of the Iowa caucuses on the Republican side was a gentleman by, by the name of Ted Cruz, Raphael Edward Cruz. See, that's where the hissing should come in. Um, the Ayatollah of Texas. <laughs> Alan Dershowitz called him the smartest student he ever had at Harvard Law. But he's quite mad. <laughs> he is. I doubt if he could have won a majority of the voices in his own head. <laughs> Crazier than Norman Bates after showering in psilocybin riddled with corn fungus. <laughs> Surprised the FDA didn't mandate he post warnings at rallies to alert supporters who suffered from nut allergies. <laughs> Too much? I do that all the time. Uh, also, not, not the favorite of anybody. Uh, John Boehner, the former Speaker of the House, said he was Lucifer in the flesh. And that caused Peter King, who's a representative in New York State, to say it was an unfair comparison to Lucifer. <laughs> and they're Republicans. Okay, then, eight days later, the circus moved to New Hampshire, ladies and gentlemen, the Granite State, whose motto is, live free or die, you commie, pinko, yellow rat, bastard you, but only the first four words fit on the license plate. <laughs> And the winner there on the Democratic side was a gentleman by the name of Bernard Sanders. <laughs> wow, there's somebody here who hates everybody. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I met Bernie. He's got the he's got the sense of humor of an end table. Um, <laughs> But he did try to bring civility back to politics. He actually said to Hillary during one of their debates, I'm tired of hearing about your damn emails. It's because he doesn't know what they are. <laughs> to him, a fax machine is dark sorcery. <laughs> S said the guy with an overhead projector, I know. <laughs> of course, Hillary was a bit disingenuous herself. 
saying she had never done anything that any other Secretary of State hadn't already done. So apparently in 1790, Thomas Jefferson had server problems as well. <laughs> and he did, because if you remember, his server, Sally Hemings, was pregnant. <laughs> That's a 227-year-old joke, ladies and gentlemen. You don't get many opportunities to do that. And, and I'm not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I'm just like my country, young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. It's an excerpt from Hamilton. That's a show tune. Maybe something less esoteric. Got it. Okay, so, oh, also, he was going to debate Donald Trump. I don't know if you remember that. I was so looking forward to it. Because you know, you know he would have chewed the New York City real estate developer up, but then been forced to spit him out due to religious dietary laws. <laughs> 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 Happy Hanukkah, everybody. <laughs> then they moved on. After Iowa and New Hampshire, you'd think they would move on to a populous state, and you would be wrong, ladies and gentlemen. You would be as wrong as Cabernet Sauvignon in a can. No, they moved on to South Carolina. South Carolina, that's right. The first three stops to determine the direction of the ship of state are Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, which is like, which is like opening a film appreciation course with an Adam Sandler retrospective. <laughs> His later stuff, not his early funny work. <laughs> and of course, South Carolina, home of the low information voter. <laughs> I'm not making it up. That is a demographic category. It means stupid people. <laughs> but the beauty is you can use the phrase right in front of them. <laughs> Yes, Rachel, I'm here in Charleston with a focus group made up solely of self-described low-information voters. <laughs> and you can see they are. No, sir, the other side. Turn the stool over, the flat part. There you go. Much better, don't you think? <laughs> and then the campaign went on and on and on. And it soon became apparent that Hillary Clinton was the only Democrat who could possibly lose to Donald Trump. And Donald Trump was the only Republican who could possibly lose to Hillary Clinton. We lived through the worst O. Henry story ever written. <laughs> and of course, Hillary voluntarily entered pantsuit prison. She played it safe. While Donald Trump made more missteps than the last place finisher in a drunken hopscotch tournament played on cobblestones. <laughs> Blindfolded. That was too much? Yeah, 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 I always, yeah. And it actually got to California, which was very exciting for us, because we never count, because we're so late in the process. Although in 2020, we're going to be the second week in March, of course, that's going to cause every other state to leapfrog us, and I predict that the first primary for the year, pre, for, I'm going to start over. And I predict that the first primary for the 2020 presidential election will be sometime August of 2019. <laughs> but we're also, one of the reasons they don't spend any, any ad money in California is because we're so darn blue. How blue? Glad you asked. We are bluer than the sliver of a liver of an alcoholic smurf. <laughs> We're post blue. We're indigo, eggplant, aubergine, periwinkle, cerulean, and yes, we know the difference. <laughs> Especially in Northern California, darling, where the threat level is a hearty burgundy with overtures of baked cherry currants. <laughs> And a slight minerality not unreminiscent of charcoal filtered pomegranates. <laughs> and then Donald Trump 
I mean, it didn't matter what he did. It, it didn't matter. People kept waiting for the disqualifying straw to hit the camel's back, and it didn't matter. I mean, he, 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 sued, he sued people. He stiffed contractors. He, he had Trump Air and Trump Wine and Trump Steaks and Trump University. He grabbed private parts. Uh, it, he, just, he got in a fight. <clears throat> he got in a fight with the Pope, ladies and gentlemen. The Pope. This Pope. The good Pope. <laughs> not the old pope, not the Nazi pope, no. Because what happened was Francis went down to Mexico in 2016 and they took him to the border and someone said to him, you know, uh, Trump wants to build a wall on the border. And the pope says a good Christian would build a bridge, not a wall. And Trump got all bent about his shape. Who is he to decide who's a good Christian? <laughs> uh, he, he, he's the Pope. <laughs> That's his gig. <laughs> That's all he does. <laughs> Frankie, not Benny. <laughs> it's uh, Benedict on the left, uh, the Nazi Pope, and I, that is not a hyperbole. He admitted that he was a member of the Hitler Youth, but he said he didn't mean to join. He was forced into it. He didn't believe any of the tenets, and he got out as soon as he could. And I could totally relate, because that's my experience with the Catholic Church. <laughs> And this is just to prove anybody can look like anybody. Here's, here's Trump and Grumpy Cat. <laughs> and here, here's uh, James Carville and Gollum. <laughs> and, and that's Vladimir Putin and Dobby. <laughs> and that's Hillary Clinton and Chucky. <laughs> And that's Ted Cruz and Grandpa Moose. <laughs> and that's uh, Alec Baldwin and Lou Gehrig. <laughs> I know, I just love how the, the laughs change. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> and, and that's uh, Trump and Putin. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Different angle. And I, this is out of sequence, but it's the only known photo of a, of a scowling pope. <laughs> and it, yeah, it might be his proximity to the two angels of death. And then the conventions, ladies and gentlemen, and the conventions went on, and, and of course, the Republicans, um, <laughs> sorry. the Republicans met in Cleveland, and the Democrats met in, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Democrats met in Philadelphia, and not much happened, and then election night. Oh. Yeah, that's the famous county by county map that he has. Yeah, in the White House, in the Oval Office. And I had a show here that night. And, uh, cause in 2012 I did a show, cause I can't do comedy clubs anymore. And I'm too old for the comedy clubs. The average age of a comedy club is now, has been, forever shall be 18 to 35. Uh, so I, I go to a club and they just stare at me like, w why is this bitter old man lecturing me? <laughs> So I started doing theaters. In 2012, I did a show here, right here. It was called Elect to Laugh. I ran from uh, Super Tuesday all the way to election night. Election night, 2012, Obama re-elected. I had a TV on stage. There was cake and champagne. It was a party. It was a lot of fun. So in 2016, of course, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're ahead of me. Uh, the, the first female uh, is going to become president of the United States, so we had a TV on stage, and the show started at 8 p.m., which means the shit hadn't just hit the fan. It was flying off the fan. And, and people, peop, I swear to God, people were weeping openly, which admittedly has happened at my shows before. But, uh, oh, man. 
was ugly. Yeah, cake went on eating, champagne went on drinking. And then, inauguration day. <laughs> and I'm still surprised he put his hand on the Bible and it didn't burst into flames. <laughs> And I was there, ladies and gentlemen. I was there in 2009. This is 2009 with Barack Obama's first inaugural. And this is exactly eight years later, to the minute, 12.30, noon 30 p.m. on January 20th. And, and he sent, day one, he sent his minions out, and poor Sean Spicer, but he couldn't handle it anymore. They just beat him down. He had a, he had a lie so many times, and, and, he, and he could, at the end, I expected him to show up, you know, at a press conference with his tile around his, his head, forehead with a knife in his teeth. All right, who wants a piece of me? <laughs> Right. But he had to resign in order to spend more time lying to his family. But before he did, <laughs> on day one, he was forced to tell everybody that Donald Trump had the most well-attended inaugural in the history of ever. And you can see, right, yeah, okay. In spite of, and, it's, and that was 333 days ago. <laughs> It seems like forever. Shouldn't he be termed out by now? All my friends are so excited for me, you know. Oh, Durst, man, Trump must be a gift from comedy heaven. Well, yeah, but no, because how do you parody a parody? The 45th president of the United States of America is Donald Trump. That's the joke. <laughs> the rest is farce. President Donald Trump, something has gone horribly awry. It's like saying Pope Charlie Sheen. <laughs> the John Goodman swimsuit calendar. Kim Kardashian in a lab coat at the Atomic Energy Commission. Don't let her touch anything. Charles Barkley in charge of UNICEF. That's, that's just for me. Normally, the political comedy landscape is a horizon, and it's punctuated by spikes. And the spike can be a scandal, or a gaffe, or he accidentally said something true, or a blue dress, devil in a blue dress, blue dress, blue dress, devil with a blue dress, on. Ow. And then the comics, what we do is we circle around the spikes and we try to get different perspectives. And, and But with him, it's all spikes. You can't get a, a, it's like trying to pick a single tree out of a forest doing 80 and the freeway going past, you know, that one. <laughs> he uses chaos as fog. You can't, you can't, it's like trying to staple smoke <laughs> or juggle jello. Or catch an eel in a butter sculpture wearing oven mitts. <laughs> okay, that's grammatically confusing. Uh, you wearing the oven mitts, not the eel. <laughs> Eels don't have hands. Some some have little flipper things, you know, like like Trump hands. <laughs> But you know what they say, small hands, small understanding of how government works, yeah. <laughs> and there's something different every day. This summer, I would switch between the news and, and the giants, and shit happened between batters. <laughs> Have you seen the news anchors? They're exhausted. Production assistants running out of the set during the cold open. Wait, wait, there's more. <laughs> the directors keep telling the on-air personalities to close their mouths because jaws keep dropping open. <laughs> the teleprompter has scars. <laughs> you know that graphic breaking news? It broke. <laughs> it's, it's, it's permanently illuminated. The new ones don't even have off switches. Leave it on, leave it on. <laughs> and that's my impression of Stephen Hill from TV's Law and Order in his portrayal of New York City District Attorney Adam Schiff. Make the deal, make the deal. 
less esoteric. <laughs> I, always do. I always do that, sorry. But I'm here for you. The hard part is living on the West Coast. Because no matter how early we get up, he's had a three-hour head start <laughs> to light the fuse to Armageddon. Every day without a mushroom cloud is a victory. <laughs> and speaking of Kim Jong-un, poor little chubby Korean kid is pissed. He lost top position on the prestigious world's wackiest leader with the most peculiar hair list. That's an award that's been in his family for generations. It was his legacy. He had one thing, Trump took it away. The rocket man better watch out. Yeah. Calls him Rocket Man. It's gonna destroy North Korea. It'll it'll be the best nuclear war ever. <laughs> the only good part of this, uh, the silver lining is package tours to Guam are really cheap now. <laughs> Every day, every hour, something happens. Yeah, what was it? Last week, uh, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third went, went in front of Congress and he testified that yes, he was changing his answers to questions, but only because he remembered more now that there was evidence. <laughs> that is a quote. Trump's lawyers have a lawyer who has a lawyer, who has a team on retainer. He is putting the country back to work. One attorney at a time. He's gonna make America litigate again. We have high jokes, we have low jokes. How does he do it? Volume. And he keeps, he keeps throwing the bright shiny object every time he gets in trouble. And we're complicit, because we have the attention span of high speed lint. You know? Why, this is one of the most critical junctures in American history. I can't believe we find there's a, hey, look, a squirrel. <laughs> he was getting in trouble for Russia, and then suddenly Obama tried to bug the White House. No evidence whatsoever. Even his staff, even his staff was quoted as saying, huh? <laughs> Except for Kelly <laughs> You know, the skinny, mean, blonde lady who looks like she was assembled out of defective Ikea parts and then flash frozen for optimum brittleness. Yeah, she went on, she went on a show and she, she actually intimated that the surveillance by Obama might have been accomplished through the microwave oven. I'm not, she said that out loud in front of a guy with a microphone who was very confused. <laughs> it was the microwave oven in league with the toaster. I never trusted that toaster. And the blender has a lean and hungry look. The blender lies. I do six things. Blend, chop, mix, pulse, puree, liquefy. It's all the same thing. <laughs> These are the same kitchen appliances responsible for the tragedy in Bowling Green. <laughs> How soon they forget. <laughs> Healthcare could be so complicated. <laughs> Everybody! Except you! Again! Maybe this is why traditionally the presidency has not been an entry level position. <laughs> Oh, he's a quick study. No, he's not. He's 71 and watches Fox News all day. I don't think his learning curve has many more bendy parts. 
Even Paul Ryan said, hey, no, he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, isn't that comforting? <laughs> Paul Ryan talking about liquid squeeze bags. <laughs> yeah, this uh, tax bill. And then the tax bill that they passed today, which gets rid of uh, Obamacare, essentially, by getting rid of the mandate, uh, it, it, it gets rid of winter heating subsidies to the elderly. That's what we're cutting, so rich people can have more money. Winter heating subsidies to the elderly. Why don't we just cut to the chase? You hit 65, we ship you to the Aleutian Islands, put you on an ice floe with matches and a pointy stick. <laughs> and if you're, if you're a Republican, we take away the stick because it's an entitlement. <laughs> Poor people are going to get screwed out of this, man. They're going to get rid of Medicare. Uh, well, they're, they're already talking about replacing Medicare with vouchers, coupons, health care coupons. Why? Because old people love coupons. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a coupon. <laughs> yeah, only four more. We can book the anesthesiologist. <laughs> now, only three for Kaiser. <laughs> and then we phase in early bird organ transplants. <laughs> somehow get Groupon involved. 50% off your colonoscopy. But we have to sell 300 by 4 p.m., so tell your friends. <laughs> oh, we have to stimulate the rich. You know what? I'm all in favor of stimulating the rich. How about a remote-controlled cattle prod suppository? Wouldn't that... <laughs> Oh, see, you don't understand. Uh, we, we give the money to the rich, then they spend it, and it trickles down to the poor. No! They're not going to spend it. They're going to hang on to it. That's how they got rich. <laughs> you know why the poor don't have any money? Because we spent all our money. <laughs> give us some more. We'll spend it again. I promise. We'll waste it on, on silly, superfluous shit like food and rent and clothing. <laughs> 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 That's Ace, and he is a, he is one. And then uh, he was back there, and we're taping this. This might be a DVD, but uh, it might not. <laughs> no, no, you're a great crowd. We we should have taped this show. Oh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> He's pissing off allies, allies. He's pissed off. He pissed off Mexico, Great Britain, NATO, Canada. Can how do you piss off Canada? <laughs> yeah, whatever, eh? <laughs> you know, diplomatically speaking, these are not the tough ones. Do you see what he did to the Prime Minister of Montenegro? It was at the, the final photo shoot for the NATO thing, and there were 28 countries, all the leaders are lining up. They get a, right there, they're going to that line, right there to line up in a row for the photo shoot, and Trump takes the guy out of the way, pal, <laughs> so he could step to the front. Four inches, he moved up four inches. Apparently that's a very important measurement to him. <laughs> that was a dick joke, but it, it, it was a presidential dick joke, so it's cachet. <laughs> and the Republicans, they're not just lousy losers, they're whiny winners as well. Get over it, he's president, get over it. No problem, uh, to completely understand. Perhaps uh, an example of how to get over it might be illustrative, uh, like how you got over Barack Hussein Obama, eight years saying he was born in Kenya. He wasn't born in Kenya, he was born in Honolulu, in a manger, we all know that. <laughs> and then he was visited by the three Howleys who <laughs> presented him with gold, frankincense, and puka shells from Hilo Hattie's. <laughs> Can't do that joke in the Midwest, because they don't go to Hawaii, they go to Cancun. <laughs> they don't know what Hilo Hattie's is. <laughs> Get over it, like you get over Obamacare. Voting to repeal it 60 times in the House. Voting in favor of repealing, even though they knew it needed the signature of the guy whose name was on the bill. What was the plan there, get him drunk? 
<laughs> I hope Democrats give Donald John Trump the same exact support that Republicans gave Barack Hussein Obama. Hell, I hope they give him twice the support because two times zero is still zero. <laughs> of course, that's the kind of higher math that confuses them. Damn you intellectual elites trying to trick us with your fancy multiplication tables and shit. <laughs> I'll tell you what else confuses them. San Francisco. Yeah. Because while we are a confusing city, there's no beach in North Beach. And it's on the east side of the city. To be geographically precise, it should be known as East Beachless. The love generation sprang up out of the hate. San Francisco Mime Troop talks. <laughs> Debbie and I live in the Sunset District. You never see the goddamn sunset. <laughs> it's the only town in the world where guys in motorcycle leathers trade recipes. <laughs> and Nancy Pelosi is considered a moderate. <laughs> the only moderate thing about this city. Do you believe it, man? $4,000 for a studio in the Mission? Yeah. yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that'll help. <laughs> it's not just the renters who are living day to day, you know, feeding their landlords vitamins and herbs and shit. Even, even people who own are still hanging on because we have no idea. Well, maybe I should sell, but where are you going to move to, Vallejo? <laughs> then you'd be in Vallejo! <laughs> I love this town, I do, I don't know if I can move. I mean, the food, the view, the climate, it's, <laughs> although, one of the best restaurant cities in America, and Debbie and I still eat at the same six restaurants, you know, because we know where to park. <laughs> but the view, I mean, how many times, just been doing errands, and, and you crest the hill, and they're, <laughs> and the climate, except for the day it was 106. Anybody here for that? And we were like dogs on the cement, you know, just... Because there's no air conditioning anywhere yet. <laughs> and also, we don't care who you are. I love that about us. I do. You can be... This is the Petri dish of social change. This little 49 square mile circus in search of a tent. <laughs> it is. You can be, you can, you can be a red-bearded Lithuanian vegan dwarf into golden showers. Come on down. <laughs> we got a street festival for that. <laughs> we will tolerate anything, any except intolerance. That we cannot abide. We hate the judgmental. Kill them. <laughs> And I love the fact that every four years, every mayor, oh, Ed, oh, Ed, no, oh, 65, man, that was weird, because I'm 65, to see that little, you know, black thing, 1952 to 2017, <laughs> but Ed, uh, nobody disliked them, you know? Nobody liked them, but nobody disliked them. Yeah. But every mayor, Every mayor, back from Willie and, and before that, Agnos, every mayor uh, floats the proposal that we're going to host the Olympics. No, you could never have the Olympics in San Francisco. We're so politically correct, the winner of the 100 meter dash would have to be equally weighted between the runner's actual time and a three page essay detailing man's inhumanity to the slow. <laughs> I'm sorry, velocity challenged. <laughs> We have militant vegans in San Francisco who will punch you right in the face. Doesn't hurt, but still. <laughs> Good manners dictate you pretend it does. You know. Ow. <laughs> Good manners will take you far in this town. That's why I have developed the perfect, generic, non-genderic, Salutation. It's beyond pronouns. It's halfway between man and ma'am. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. Because I gotta admit, 20% of the time I have no idea what's going on. 
Right. I don't care. Go, do, be. You know, it's just, I'm a courtly kind of a guy. I need to know. Uh, do I say my lady or dude? <laughs> to dude or not to dude? <laughs> that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or take arms against the seer troubles and by opposing end them. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook now has 57 separate categories for sexual identification. And if you go to the Safeway on Market Street on Friday after midnight, you can see everyone. <laughs> 57, that is such bullshit, man. 57, say, how many people on the face of the planet? 7 billion? That's how many sexual identifications there are. Because we are all snowflakes. <laughs> and now, the rest of the world is looking at us during the time of Trump as being, you know, the last pocket of resistance. We are the rebel base, man. This is Endor. <laughs> Which is why you see so many Ewoks running around. <laughs> because it was a long time ago in a galaxy. <laughs> I, I, that's a reflection of the professor, not the class. No. <laughs> but now with Trump replacing Obama and Orange truly becoming the new black. Oh. Days <laughs> later, in another part of town. Oh. <laughs> we are busy, man. We're redefining Elizabeth Kubler Ross's five stages of grief to denial, denial, <laughs> denial, <laughs> denial, <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we're preparing for the zombie apocalypse. We're storing up canned goods, but really, really good canned goods. <laughs> Organic heirloom artisanal cannellini beans from the northwest section of Italy's Tuscany region. <laughs> I'm growing my hair long just for that little flip right there. <laughs> I'm letting my freak flag fly, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're building bunkers, but ours have hardwood floors. <laughs> and a view. <laughs> See, that's funny, because a bunker with a view kind of defeats the... Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, we're expecting a civil war. And it's worrisome, because the other side has all the guns. <laughs> but we have all the lesbians. <laughs> That's a joke that got us banned in Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. Didn't understand that. I, th I thought it was an empowering thing, you know? No, no, you said the word. <laughs> but I don't care anymore. Really, honest to God, I don't care anymore. I, 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 people who have seen me before will, will tell you, uh, they will attest to the fact that normally I approach this forum with a modicum of decorum. I attempt to utilize a, a, a fraction of taste and discretion, make a reasonable attempt at being bipartisan. Well, America spoke on November 8th, ladies and gentlemen, so fuck that shit. <laughs> From now on, I'm going after him the same way I, uh, he went after America. I have Democratic jokes. I could do Democrat. The reason the Democrats are so intent on passing the stem cell bill is they're depending on their research to generate a spine. I have plenty of Democratic jokes. <laughs> I love Hillary's laugh. I have recordings of it that I use in the bathroom to degrout the tile. I have many Democratic jokes. <laughs> But you feel bad picking on the Democrats. It's like it's like kicking a, a kicking a, a puppy. Oh. Yeah, a crippled puppy. <laughs> with, with mange and a lazy eye and a, in a cage in the corner of a kennel under a flatulent Pomeranian with a rat gnawing on the head. Oh. Too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> they are useless. They are, they are, oh man, they're, they're as useless as an ejection seat in a helicopter. <laughs> like a pistol range in a bouncy house. Costume designer on a porn flick. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> a glass pinata. Solar powered night vision goggles. Come on, people, there were five punchlines. <laughs> they are useless. They make a eunuch look like a sperm whale. <laughs> oh. That's hurtful to sperm whales. <laughs> I don't care. Really, I don't care anymore. I don't, even, I don't even care. Look at that. I don't care what I, I haven't shaved in like a week. I'm not wearing a suit. People have seen me before. These aren't even my primary show shoes. These are my tertiary show shoes. I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I go out to eat. I order extra gluten with every meal. <laughs> I don't care anymore. I, I'll go swimming 45 minutes after eating. I won't wait the whole hour. <laughs> I'm <laughs> well, you never make the big time with that kind of an attitude. Are you kidding me, man? It's a Tuesday night. I'm sold out in the middle of Hipsterville City Central. This is the big time. Yeah. I don't... I really, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't changed my underwear since Labor Day. <laughs> no, that's a lie. And that's another thing. I never lie up here. I, I, I exaggerate or hypothesize or I make conjecture, but I never lie. But I don't care. I'm going after him the same way he went after America. I'm using his rules now. From now on, I'm, I'm going to use lies, <clears throat> lies and insults and threats and thuggery and bombast and bluster and bellicosity. And, and alternative facts and blatant falsehoods and choosy truths and deceptive invective and egregious deceit and fallacious assholeism <laughs> and grievous harm and hellacious bullshit and injurious speculation and juvenile duplicity and kooky logic and licentious intent and, and malicious malignancies and nefarious impulses and, and oh opportunistic greed predatory prevarications questionable human origin really dumb fibs suspect veracities tremendously trite cliches uh, 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 venal viciousnesses, <laughs> willful ignorance, and xenophobic paranoia. And I know xenophobic starts with an X, but they think it starts with a Z, so I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to use lies and insults. Did I mention lies and insults? Because I meant to mention lies and insults. Everything that dribbles out of his face-forward gash that isn't gibberish is a lie. <laughs> and he insults everybody, everywhere, all the time. He's as diplomatic as a screech owl in a phone booth filled with field mice. <laughs> phone booth was a glass box we used to have on street corners. And someone else's phone was in it, and if you fed the box some coins that would let you make a call. <laughs> Coin was a little metal disc. <laughs> it, it, it was a different time. Because <laughs> it, it was a reporter for the New York Times who had written a negative thing about him, and uh, he knew the guy. The, the guy had formerly been the social editor for the New York Observer for like eight years or something, and the guy's got a form of cerebral palsy. So the next day, Trump's at a rally, a televised rally in front of supporters, and he's reading what the guy wrote, and he's, oh, and he's a real loser, and he's like this. <laughs> Who would do that? Because we all have friends or family or, or co co-workers or somebody we're close to and, and the, you know, they're, they're differently abled, they're crippled, they're disabled, whatever, whatever. They, just build them a ramp for Christ's sake, I don't care what you call them. Um, but uh, somebody who's a little slower or weaker, and we've seen people make fun of them. We've seen them, pe people make fun of them to their face or <clears throat> behind their back, and we know who these people are. They're assholes, ladies and gentlemen. The President of the United States is an asshole. Donald J. Trump is an asshole. He insults everybody. 
he, he, he insults the judiciary, the intelligence community, the media, the the judiciary. I mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> he, his own staff, his own his own cabinet, his own his own family, Mexicans, Muslims, women, Muslim women. Mexican Muslims, women who are Mexicanish, uh, the media, Congressional Medal of Honor winners, beauty pageant contestants, the Boy Scouts of America, the Navajo code talkers, the media, uh, uh, what's his name? Clinton, uh, Obama, Clinton, Paul Re Rand Paul, Paul Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> Reynolds rap. Uh, Chris Pratt, Chris Pine, Chris Evans, uh, the NFL, the the NRA, no, not the NRA, uh, the NFL, the the NPR, the, yeah, the, the the PBR, uh, the DAR, uh, the NSA, the NWA, the TSA, the TWA, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He, and Stephen Colbert, Stephen Curry, Stephen Curry, <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell, Nordstrom, Nordstrom, Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep. <laughs> People prefer vinegar-based coleslaw. He, he's, I made that one up. He insults everybody except Vladimir Putin, yeah. which is as suspicious as finding an AK-47 in your CRISPR bin. <laughs> CRISPR bin, you know, like in a refrigerator. <laughs> that was the bottom of the table got in the way. You couldn't see him opening there. Then there's Don Jr., the Fredo of the Trump crime family. <laughs> He's going to make us an offer we can't understand. <laughs> what? Huh? I don't... Because <laughs> he had that meeting with the Russian lawyer. It was only about... Uh, Russian adoptions had nothing to do with any of it, and it was only the two of them, and that, and quit asking, okay, maybe Paul Manafort might have been in it, and Jared Kushner, but they were small, insignificant, okay, he was the campaign manager in the top eight, but that was it, and it was just about Russian adoptions, and it had nothing to do with seeking damaging information about Hillary Clinton, even though that was the subject line in the email, and even if it had some to do with seeking damaging information about Hillary Clinton, which it did but even if it did, that wouldn't be illegal. But it was not, okay, maybe it was about that, but nothing happened at the meeting. And how do we know? Because all the people who were there or weren't there say so. And why wouldn't we believe the people who had lied to us at every turn? And that, but that was all that was there. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a former security agent for the KGB was there. Uh, maybe a couple other people, but that was it. Where was this meeting? Was it was it inside Trump Tower or outside in a clown car? Because people keep emerging from it. <laughs> and how far do these connections go? What did Trump know? And when did he know he knew it? <laughs> yeah. Or what didn't he know? And who knows he knew he didn't know? And when? <laughs> Or does he even know that what he knew he didn't know or didn't know he knew might not have been knowable at the time, which is now? <laughs> and who knows what evil works in the hearts of men? <laughs> Anybody? Sure. That's right. Here's dimes for all of you. <laughs> Do you have shadow? Yeah. Okay. You did not. You just said so. Uh, Maybe over 50 in order to get shadow, man. <laughs> and you know, you know that if the tables were turned, he would be saying that Hillary was so deep in bed with Putin, she was leaving hickeys on his ankles. <laughs> you know what happened. You know what happened. Many people are talking about it. Important people. Top people. <laughs> poor, poor, poor Hillary. Nothing she did, man. People hate her. I don't know why. Why do people hate her so much? Since 92. This is what they said about her when she was first lady. She's a liar. She's a thief. She's a lesbian. She murdered Vince Foster. With her bare hands and then ate him. 
I mean, Democrats, Republicans, all you got to do is mention her name. They start twitching like a hamster duct taped to a rotor tiller. But, but, but even Democrats, I don't like her. Why not? I don't, I don't know. Big calves. Nothing you can do about big calves. <laughs> Didn't matter what she did. She could have rescued a litter of kittens. Puppies. Puppies from a burning building. <laughs> and people would have, ah, the dogs were planted. <laughs> and Trump could have pushed an old lady in a wheelchair down three flights of stairs. And his supporters would argue until they were blue in the face. Oh, he was giving her a series of chiropractic adjustments. <laughs> she didn't just win the three debates. She crushed him in the three debates. He looked like an idiot with a 200 word vocabulary following her around. He was creepy. He was, he was and <laughs> except the bar was so low, he got points for not actually flinging his own feces at Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Oh, he demonstrated remarkable restraint. <laughs> and the big knock against Hillary, she was overprepared. <laughs> overprepared for a presidential debate. Yeah, it was like she had studied or something. <laughs> I am so tired of little Miss Smarty Pants showing off with her facts and shit. <laughs> These are the same people who hate Obamacare and will protest to keep their Affordable Care Act intact. <laughs> the ones who want to get rid of the corruption in Washington by hiring a New York City real estate developer. <laughs> which is like eliminating the smell under the sink by calling in a skunk. <laughs> oh, he's going to bring back the coal industry. The coal industry! <laughs> And we're going to have black and white TVs again, and, and buggy whips, and sock garters, and we're going to have lamps that burn whale blubber again. <laughs> These are people who think he's a brilliant businessman because they saw him on TV. Well, at least he ain't no intellectual elite. <laughs> Never a true word has been spoken. <laughs> I'm so tired of ha I'm so tired of having to hold the hand of the dim. The people still fighting Darwin. No, honey, the sun isn't being eaten by the dragon. It's nighttime. <laughs> yes, again, I know, right? The sun will come out tomorrow. You can bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, you're always a day away. Okay, there's your show to <laughs> People used to be embarrassed to be stupid. Now it's like a, like a badge of authenticity. Damn you intellectual elites. You all think you're so much smarter than us just because you're educated and shit. Yeah! Education does! <laughs> these these so-called noble rustics, these sanctified rudimentaries, these rude mechanicals, you know, demanding their God-given right to beat up blacks and gays and Jews and women because they twisted the words of some 2,000-year-old comic book hero to fit their small-minded prejudices. And then they're always cheered on by the bleached creatures and the leeching creatures and, and the preachers and teachers and cops. Oh, it's, it's only high spirits. It's boys being boys, that's all. It was only fun. And fuck you! <laughs> with your phony war on political correctness because you can't find it in your heart to act with simple common human decency. I'll tell you why they voted for him because he's a white male. That's it. That's his core constituency, white males who played football without helmets. <laughs> that was the problem with Obama. He was a, it, if, it wasn't ra if it wasn't racist, it was racial. I mean, face it, there are still people angry that we were governed by a black guy living in public housing. <laughs> 
a hat black guy. And it, isn't that just like America? Yeah, we're an adult, mature, grown-up nation. We can elect an African-American president. But first, I don't know, why don't we try out a hat black guy? <laughs> you know, like a starter Negro. <laughs> Baby steps, a hybrid. <laughs> then we work our way up to Samuel L. Jackson. We're, we're, we're just Afro-curious. <laughs> and Hillary was a woman. What if, what if there's an emergency and she gets all hormonal and shit? <laughs> you know, that's where that whole education thing might come in handy. <laughs> First a black guy, then a woman. What's next? A sheep? <laughs> Be better than this toad. <laughs> and he's an oaf. We've never had an oaf as president. We've had psychopaths. I am not a psychopath. <laughs> We've had predators. <laughs> I've never had sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> he was pointing at Helen Thomas. He meant that one. <laughs> But we never had an oaf. And, he, and I don't want to sink to his level, but he always looks like he's taking a dump. <laughs> Doesn't he with the furrowed brow and the pur Oh, geez, I got a, I got a pinch of Oh, my God. You should have seen what came out of my butt. It was huge. It was tremendous. It was amazing. People from all around said they had never seen anything like it. And important people, top people. <laughs> I remember this. Despite the negative, the constant negative press, Kofefi. <laughs> it's obvious what he was trying to write. Negative press coverage, because he always says that, and he always uh, accuses people of it. And and what would you or I would you know? He probably tried to delete it, but he was betrayed by his undersized digits, and he hit send. <laughs> But then you or I would have uh, deleted the whole thing, started, oh no, he doubled down. Who can figure out the true meaning of Kofefi? Enjoy! <laughs> Enjoy! <laughs> Don't just sit, but spin! Enjoy! Because he's incapable of admitting making a mistake ever. Not even a typo for great thing. <laughs> he's 12. Yeah. Yeah. He is 12. That's like, that's like as, you know when you wipe your butt and your finger sometimes goes through the paper and then he, he called us over to shake our hands. That's what that's. Oh, I'm gross? I'm compared to him? <laughs> Low IQ, crazy, Mika was bleeding from a bad facelift, Megan Kelly was bleeding from her whatever. Was he traumatized by a Tampax when he was little? <laughs> when he was little, yesterday, because he's 12. <laughs> and uh, right here, remember, uh, uh, this, is, this is Trump, because uh, you, you got to understand that what he says is not what he means. This is what he says. I'm going to show you what he says and what he means. What he says, what Trump says. A lot of people don't know this, but... He didn't know that. <laughs> what Trump says, he's a good person, a fabulous, fine, major talent. What he means, somebody agrees with him, but he wouldn't want them to babysit the kids. <laughs> what Trump says, it's a fact. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. What Trump means, he read it on Breitbart. <laughs> what Trump says, I have top people working on this. What he means, he left a message on Jared Kushner's voicemail. <laughs> What Trump says, I will let you know in a brief period of time. What he means, he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> what Trump says, many people are talking about this. What Trump means, some guy in Eli, Nevada tweeted it in 2014. <laughs> what Trump says, absolutely, 100%. What Trump means, probably not. <laughs> what Trump says, I love the poorly educated. What Trump means, they make up his base. <laughs> what Trump says, I won't tell you our plans so we don't alert the enemy. What he means, he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> And finally, what Trump says, oh no, just more, what Trump says, just more fake news. What Trump means, once again, someone has uncovered new evidence. <laughs> and what Trump says, believe me, believe me. What Trump means, don't believe him, don't believe him. <laughs> you guys, 
uh, I've been holding you up. Uh, we're going to get through the rest of this. Like, lickety split. The uh, show is way too long. I know that. But there's so much. <laughs> no, there's so much. Uh, he, he says that he has a plan to keep violent extremists out of the country. Apparently, the plan is to put him in his cabinet. Uh, that, <laughs> that is Steve Mnuchin. That is the Secretary of the Treasury whose plan is to run the country like a business, which is scary because these are the guys who would burn it down for the insurance. <laughs> that, and that's how you can tell people who have kids because that is uh, Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos who had never been to public school in her life or sent any of her five kids to public school ever. So at least she's not coming in with a lot of preconceptions. Uh, <laughs> speaking of preconceptions, that is Scott Pruitt. That is uh, the director of the EPA. As attorney general in Oklahoma, he sued the EPA 14 times. So he's familiar with the legal department. Before, <laughs> before he was attorney general of Oklahoma, he was an oil company lobbyist, an oil industry lobbyist. And now he's the director of the EPA. <laughs> he's an environmental oil man, which is like saying vegetarian butcher, <laughs> or kosher pork tartare. <laughs> or a Catholic condom supply house. <laughs> or George W. Bush think tank. <laughs> or Dick Cheney Marin County drum circle retreat. <laughs> or Stephen Hawking super secret scuba tips. <laughs> <laughs> or the Bakersfield School of Fashion Design. <laughs> <laughs> are the Mendocino After Hours Entertainment Guide? <laughs> or Mill Valley Affordable Housing? <laughs> or www.amish.com? <laughs> or Marijuana Initiative? <laughs> Internet Privacy? <laughs> Fox News? Okay. <laughs> That is Nikki Haley. Uh, she is the ambassador of the United Nations. She had been out of the country three times in her entire life before being appointed ambassador to the United Nations. Yeah, she's from South Carolina where the term foreign relations means doing it with anybody who's not your first cousin. <laughs> in Alabama, the restrictions aren't so severe. That is Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third. He's the Attorney General, at least he was when the show started. Uh, and you know that two other people were named Jefferson Beauregard Sessions, which should be a Class D felony. Uh, uh, also, I mean, look at him. You know, there there was a plantation involved in that family. You know, there was. Uh, he's the reason that Trump is able to say there's no room in his party for racists because apparently all the slots are full. <laughs> and speaking of Steve Bannon, oh, that is uh, the white supremacist who can neither pronounce it or spell it. Um, <laughs> gave it a shot. <laughs> Steve Bannon, the, the man, Steve Bannon, the man who says that white supremacists have feelings too. <laughs> that is Rick Perry. When he was running for president in 2012, he was leading the polls and he did a debate where he tried to remember the three departments of the cabinet he was going to get rid of. He got commerce and education and then for 53 seconds he couldn't remember energy. Which is, and he's from Texas. And now he's the secretary of energy. <laughs> you can't make shit up like this. <laughs> That is my new hero. That is Rex Tillerson. Uh, he's uh, currently the Secretary of State. Uh, again, <laughs> questionable how long. Um, he is the guy who called Trump a fucking moron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
He was, uh, he was at a meeting where they were discussing our nuclear capabilities, and Trump said he wanted to raise it to 1970 levels, where we had 30,000 instead of the 4,000 now. And they had to explain how the 30,000 back then were big and unwieldy, and these are more limber, and it's easier to keep track. And it's still 4,000, still more than enough. <laughs> And, and in that meeting, Tillerson said, he's a fucking moron. <laughs> and you don't start out at fucking moron. <laughs> That's a final exclamatory heave after exhausting many slanders. You know, like, fool, jerk, idiot, pinhead, uh, uh, moron, and then fucking moron. <laughs> Doesn't quite reach, you know, total fucking moron or banana face monkey dribbler, but it's up there. <laughs> and then, and then he he went on television. He went on one of those Sunday morning public affairs shows, and they asked him, "Did you call the president a moron?" They skipped the gerund, yeah. the active uh, adjective, they the adverb. They they skipped that. They just said, "Did you call him a moron?" And he said, "I'm not playing your games." <laughs> he refused to deny it because he's got integrity. <laughs> the CEO of Exxon has integrity. <laughs> and then someone asked Trump, did he call you a moron? And then Trump challenged him to an IQ test. <laughs> and you know, he couldn't spell IQ if you spotted him the I. <laughs> and told him the other one was between the P and the R. <laughs> <laughs> that is General James Mattis. Uh, he's the Secretary of Defense, the only man between us, a nuclear winner, and fighting with dogs for food. And his nickname is Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> And this guy, this guy refuses to take CIA briefings because he wants to play it by his gut. <laughs> Look at his hair. Do you trust anybody? Anybody's gut with that kind of... Doesn't he realize that anybody over 60 with long hair looks ridiculous? <laughs> I saw a button the other day. It's not my joke, but I saw a button that said, Think ahead, impeach Pence. <laughs> and everybody says to me, You know, Pence could be worse. No! No, not worse. Evil. Yes. Yes, all the women would be wearing red dresses. He's, he's the president of Gilead. Yes, but, but we'd be alive. Trump is crazy. I'm not the one to, Mike Bloomberg at the Democratic Convention said it's important to vote for Hillary. Why? Because she's not insane. <laughs> that was a sentiment that was echoed by that paragon of liberal media elitism. The editorial page of the Wall Street Journal said vote for Hillary because she's not insane. <laughs> And this guy's stiff, yes. He's the product of reverse taxidermy. <laughs> you need to hose him down every spring with Thompson's water seal it. I realize this. <laughs> he needs strobe lights at press conferences just to give the appearance of movement. Okay. <laughs> Too much. I know. I know. But the good news is, uh, Trump unable to accomplish anything. I mean, the Muslim ban partially implemented. It doesn't make sense. Muslim ban, if they want to get in the country, all they got to do is pretend to be Christians. That's what we do. Works out all right. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Gorsuch confirms Supreme Court justice. You got that. that. That's scary, yes, but scarier still is the fact that three other justices are 78 or older, which means the most important person in America today might be Ruth Bader Ginsburg's trainer. <laughs> he pulled us out of the Paris Accords even though hundreds of U.S. corporations lobby to stay in because apparently there's research that seems to indicate that the extinction of the human species might be bad for quarterly dividends. Yeah. 
especially in the retail sector. Uh, and 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 while well, the science isn't, you know, they always, the science isn't, yeah, yeah, it is. The permafrost is melting. Never in the history of civilization has the permafrost ever melted, hence its name. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody's been paying attention recently, but this summer, Jesus Christ, hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, Floods, Mother Nature has gone Rambo. I don't think we can totally rule out a Sharknado. <laughs> and the last thing he's accomplished is he changed his foundation co color from tequila sunrise to autumn squash. <laughs> I, think that, I think that was Melania's influence. Here's Melania. Oh That's our first lady. <laughs> That's more of our first lady. Here's a first lady of whom no nude photos are known. <laughs> and this is how classy our first couple is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what a pet project is? Cyberbullying. Yeah. Cyberbullying. And her husband is public enemy number one. So I think she's sticking it to him. Either that or Slovenia is a irony free zone. <laughs> but it's not all doom and gloom, ladies and gentlemen. I know I portray it as very doomful and gloomful, but it's not necessarily true. There are bright sides to a Donald J. Trump presidency. And I have them, these are the uh, entire <laughs> list of. Uh, <laughs> me a buck seventy nine. I go to the wall for you people. <laughs> and no, no, this is the list of bright sides of a Donald J. Trump president. Oh, oh no, that's <laughs> this, is, this is the top ten. The top ten bright sides. There should be eleven, uh, but it's not. The top ten bright sides to a Donald J. Trump presidency. Number one, the Alec Baldwin full employment on. <laughs> Number two, for the first time ever, teenage boys will collect photos of the first lady. <laughs> the next president won't have to worry about living up to an impossibly high standard. No longer have to study theater of the absurd in French. <clears throat> That's why I love San Francisco. <laughs> after, the ha after handing the nuclear codes to a malignant orange narcissist, your petty personal problems pale in comparison. His impeachment hearings will have the highest ratings ever. Even racist, xenophobic, misogynist, incompetent blowhards need role models. That is so much fun to say. George W. Bush guaranteed to move up a notch in presidential historical rankings. Sales of Maple Leaf patches to be sewn onto backpacks while traveling overseas have skyrocketed. And for the next couple of months, you will be forgiven for developing a drinking problem during the day at your job as a school bus driver. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the show. Um, let's go over our scores, shall we? Oh my God, uh, your audience participation, well, you, far, far away was a little low. But remember that time you laughed? That was great. <laughs> Carry the two. Four and a half stars, ladies and gentlemen. Four and a half out of five. 90th percentile. Congratulations. And uh, if, if I could give four and three quarter stars, I would. So uh, let's see what you win, what your prize is. <laughs> because everybody over three and a half stars gets a prize. And uh, let, well, Let's see what five was, just, just for grins, shall we? Let's see what, oh, it was the car. Oh. oh, so sad, too bad. Don't be mad because four and a half stars is right up there. A safety pin, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Each and every one of you on the way out will receive a genuine, authentic, bona fide stainless steel safety pin to be worn on your lapel as uh, as a signal that you are a member of the resistance this started out in the united kingdom after brexit 
when refugees and immigrants felt vulnerable on the tube and so people started wearing safety pins to let them know that they were a safe harbor. And I'm such a progressive tool, I have not just a safety pin, but a paper clip and a staple. <laughs> So on the way out, I will offer you a medium-sized safety pin. If you want a smaller one or if you want a larger one, that will be available to you. And uh, so that's, uh, thank you for coming. Please encourage friends to come. We're going to start this up January 30th with the Midterm Madness edition uh, every Tuesday here. Please send them soon because we don't know how much longer this sort of thing is going to be legal. <laughs> Seriously. My prediction is two years of great material, two years of running and hiding, and eight to ten years of re-education camp in a Montana gulag. <laughs> and that's why a portion of tonight's proceedings will go to a nonprofit whose mission will be to bury wire cutters along the Canadian border. <laughs> Look for the wink. And after the show, people come up to me all the time and say, but Durst, what can we do? Well, I don't know, man. I'm the fucking comic, you know? <laughs> I'm the canary in the coal mine. I'm going to keep chirping away. And I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. But hey, in times like this, it's nice to hear the choir sing. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know. It's up to you. What do members of the resistance do? They resist. They persist to resist. They insist. To exist, they they enlist and don't desist. They don't emulate the Swiss. They 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 make a list, stiff up a wrist, shake a fist, stay pissed. Come on, baby, let's do the twist. They 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 they, they confront, they defy, they provoke, they repulse, they revolt. Donate money, donate time to your favorite progressive. Donate blood, sweat, tears. And we'll get to go. Vote, vote early. Keep voting. Adopt a dead Chicagoan from Chicago. Does anybody really know what time it is? They, there are rivers to be portaged, there are loins to be girded. <laughs> lose, lose the mandolin music and, and download some Metallica for Christ's sake. <laughs> You gotta keep on keeping on. Don't let the bastards grind you down. And there it is in Latin. A dead language, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Hire, hire a Spaniard. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed democracy. Prepare to die. Never give up. Never surrender. That's the Durst case scenario. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Doggy, 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 doggy